Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today marks the start of my two week vacation from work. Uh, and today we're gonna get some work done on this car. So you can see by the title that we're gonna actually be working on some weight reduction. Uh, but what is weight reduction? Well, there's a lot of, a lot of different types. Um, I mean, there's the kind that can easily be put back or there's the kind that can't be put back where you, you know, cut things out, and break things. And that's not the kind we're doing today. We're actually going to be doing a kind that's easy to put back uh, if you ever need anything that we take out. Uh, it only takes a few minutes and the only tool I'm going to use will be this screwdriver. That's it. So, without further ado, let's start. Let's jump right into it. Another question a lot of people have is why weight, re weight reduction? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's start that again. Another question people have is why weight reduction? Well, your vehicle's weight directly impacts its acceleration because your engine has to move that much weight. And the less weight your engine has to move, the more efficient and faster, in layman's terms, it can be. Uh, people say generally every 100 pounds gives you a tenth in the quarter mile um, and a little bit more in your zero to 60 time. Just changing out these wheels, which saved 40 pounds, has gained me a significant zero to 60 time. Uh, where the stock Honda zero to 60 time claims are 9.9, .9, which I think are wrong. I think they overshot that by quite a bit. Uh, and this current Honda element with no engine modifications other than lighter rims lighter braking components uh, and a few decals which don't help no matter what the jokes say uh, is getting 7.6 so uh, I don't believe the rims attributed to that completely I think Honda was wrong and there's 0 to 60 I'm thinking it's more was like 8.2 uh, and then these brought it to 7.6 uh, there's studies out there that show rims can take up to four tenths off of your 0 to 60 time uh, because it's lighter it's unsprung weight uh, which means that it actually has a significant increase. Uh, it actually multiplies. So, uh, because it's turning and it's less that it has to turn and all that fun stuff. I don't know, science stuff, guys. Uh, anyway, we're going to start getting into this. Uh, let me open her up and uh, start showing you some stuff. Weight reduction part one. Um, so, unfortunately, in my element, the rear speakers are blown out. They don't sound that great. And, uh, there we go. They're blown out. They don't sound that great. And as a result, I don't need them. They're just excess weight. And if I don't have speakers there, that means I don't need the speaker covers either. So these guys just pop off. You can use a flat blade screwdriver or you can use your hands. They go like this. These guys rattle like crazy. Um, they actually look better than all of the other speakers in the car, but fortunately, they gotta go. And uh, this isn't needed either after that. Again, I'm retaining all of these components if I want to put them back, like if I sell a car or something. But you're going to come in here and you're going to undo these three screws around your, your speaker. Keep the screws. You don't lose them. Three screws. Then what you should be able to do is come in here. Kind of just a little bit caught under here. Like that. Now you've got your speaker. Now, you guys can't really see very great because the cable's short, but you have a cable running here. Let me let you guys see. You got a cable running here and a clip. What you have to do, set you guys down, is squeeze it and pull out, all right? Just squeeze on the edges and pull it, and these guys can be finicky, and it's cold, and my hands are kind of hurting. So this is a good two or three pounds maybe. You're like, that's not that much. Well, we got one on the other side. There'll be six pounds. Those covers are about half a pound maybe each. That's uh, seven pounds. Uh, and then there's more stuff that we're also going to be taking out. So uh, this will actually help, believe it or not. Um, this right here, pretty heavy magnet. Um, we've got, uh, I'm already breaking the foam here. I guess I shouldn't be handling it too much. Um, so we've got that. Now you're saying to yourself, that doesn't look very great. Well. <laughs> Think of all the gains you'll be getting. No pain, no gain, right? This right here, that's like a hundredth of a second you just shaved off. Um, so we're gonna leave this like this, close it, go to the other side, do the same thing. Weight reduction number two, which you can't see because my fat head is in the way. Um, so I guess disclaimer, it probably won't work for you if you have kids, but 
I'm taking the back seats out because I'm a single guy by myself. I barely have a friend to ride in the front seat, let alone anyone that's going to ride in the back seat. And these back seats, think about it, they're like 35 pounds a piece at least. That's going to be, I'm good at math guys, 70 pounds. Um, and that, well on your way to 100 pounds. Um, and with everything we're doing today, you might get about 100 pounds out of it. And it's all going to be stuff you can easily put back. So uh, to get the seat out, um, let me bring you in the car so you can kind of see what's going on. So what you want to do is pull this strap and then recline the seat all the way back to be like straight back. So you pull this strap and recline the seat all the way back. Then you'll pull that red strap I was talking to. That releases the seat from the floor. God, this is heavy. See, and this is like gonna be gains on both sides of a car, so you gotta double this. Um, then what you're gonna do, and I will kind of try and give you guys the best ability to see, best ability I can, is you see this black panel on the side of the car. You're gonna pop that off, there's a little handle on the top, you pull, comes off, and that's where your release latch is for the side of the car, and then the seat will come out. It's as easy as that. There's a little release right here. And that's that. And this can also be removed, because I'm not gonna be needing that. So this can come out of the car too. And then right here, there's a lever that you push down with your fingers. Of course, I've never done it before, so let's see. I gotta get out of the car to do it. And we're going to push that one, two, three, one. Seat removal instructions, seat owner's manual. Oh! It does come out like that, okay. It's a super heavy. So you gotta hold this and lift this out at the same time. But I'm thinking it's not doing it right because that still looks latched on that side. Okay, so it'll be easier if this was like this then. Because now, Guys, I'm having a, a slight bit of problems. I'm also a weak little fucking bitch baby, so this is probably why I'm having a problem with it. But yeah, you're supposed to hold that. I just don't get how you're supposed to hold it and then pull it out. I mean, it's coming. I'm sure you guys have heard that one before. Ah, <laughs> good joke. Oh, funny. It's like caught on the very front and it's just pivoting around the front. It looks like it's just not releasing the front latch, which could be a bit of a problem. Unless we try the other one, which we could do. So I got this one out already. So it's this one's just being a pain in the ass. But now that it's out, I'm gonna remove it out of the back of the car. So I don't think it's gonna fit through the doorway. So we're just gonna grab it, make sure that's folded in so I don't slice anything. And then try and pull it through. Kinda make sure we don't damage anything. That one, I just rotated up and it slid that front hook out. So I'm wondering if I'm just doing something wrong here. Let's see, it's acting like it's stuck. Somehow. Okay, well I just ended up snapping the seat back in place, which could be a good thing. I'm gonna fold this out, because I had this folded out last time. Then you gotta fold it out, 
undo that, pull that, make sure it stays pulled, go around the back, go like this. No, I'm not trying to have sex with my car seat. <laughs> I'm just going to have to bust it free. There you go. It's free. And it didn't damage the plastic. That's the important thing. So nothing broke. I just knocked it back. It was like wedged in there. <sighs> God. Okay. So back here, it's actually pretty roomy. Uh, but you'll notice right here, these come off. Little plastic covers, uh, not needed. Um, what they do is they just cover that there. And what that is, is that is your, it's actually disintegrating. I need to get coilovers. This is the top of your suspension system for the back of the car. And I'm just gonna take both of these off here get rid of those um what else that's needed there's really nothing else back here that i can just get rid of uh i mean any trash and stuff obviously that's cooler um but apart from that there's really nothing else that i'm gonna like rip out you know uh oh but there is one more thing that i'm gonna take out and you guys are actually on it the back floor mat the one that just comes out there's not going to be anybody back here, so you don't need it. Uh, just leave the carpet back there. That's it, bare carpet. So I will be taking that out. That's a good five pounds because those things are heavy. Um, and I think that's the basics of our reduction. Oh, debris from my accident. Don't need that either. Um, oh, yeah, the accident. Guys, come here. So she is all fixed, if you can't tell. We just gotta wait for the paint to cure for about a week, and then we can put the other decals back on. It's already dirty because it rained as soon as I picked it up from the shop. So these decals will be on the other side later, but looks good. I can't tell a difference in the paint color from that side to that side. The whole back of the car was repainted. Cause they were nerdy goofballs and they messed up the back of the car worse before they fixed it, so there's that. So hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that short video. As you can see, not all weight reduction has to be permanent. This is very easy stuff. This literally took me maybe 30 minutes uh, and I only use the screwdriver. Um, I didn't even use like anything to get underneath the panel and pop it out. Uh, I just unclipped it with my hands and unscrewed it with my screwdriver. That's about it. Um, take some muscle. So if you do need another friend, you know, I was kind of struggling with these seats by myself. But again, these two seats alone are about 70 pounds. And then this other stuff might only be a few pounds altogether. I know the speakers are about three, four, because it's a big magnet. Um, so if you're very generous to say they're five pounds each, which you're not, that's 10, 70, that's 80. And then all of this could be about two or three. That's about 83 pounds. Um, and it can also be back in 30 minutes if you just want to put it back. Um, so yeah, I encourage you guys, look for little things in your car you don't need. Um, if you do want a little bit of extra speed. Uh, if you don't have friends like me and you're a loser, then you can get rid of your back seats and your floor mat right away. Um, so just stuff like that. Um, there's just a lot of extra stuff in this car and I think it weighs it down. Um, so I'm gonna start getting rid of it. Um, but as you can see, the back of the car does look a little stripped out. Um, it does look a little messy for lack of a better term. But again, I'm going for the sporty race car look. So that really doesn't bother me. I mean, there's gonna be a roll cage back there soon anyway. Um, by soon, I mean six months to a year, so not very soon. I'm gonna get new front seats, like uh, I'm looking at the Braum uh, tan leatherette British racing seats. They're like a cinnamon orange leather, uh, and they're gonna complement the decals really well. Um, the quick release system, stuff like that. But that's all later down the road. Um, so yeah, we just removed some weight. I'm uh, interested to see a little bit, you know, just how much faster it is. Probably not a whole lot. Um, but it's definitely gonna be a slightly noticeable difference taking all of this out. So of course I know there's some discrepancies with the uh, ride height now. Uh, it's very minimal. Um, we're talking about like this is just over a fist, uh, fist to the wheel well. And this one is like a little bit less of a fist to the wheel well. 
so it might have gone up about that far not no biggie um, and actually what this is going to do is this is going to translate into better steering response because the weight will now be on the front um, when I do get my lowering coil overs later I'm actually going to adjust the ride height to correct for that because they are ride height adjustable stiffness adjustable all sorts of adjustable stuff on these I believe they're made from a case port um, the camber is also adjustable on the front wheels uh, but I'm going to keep it pretty much stock maybe just a little bit little bit of camber in there to uh, allow for better grip in hard cornering areas. But um, for right now, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, there's not a whole lot of weight in the back of this car to begin with, which is kind of why I'm concerned about removing all that weight. Uh, but I just drove it quite a little bit for a couple of hours. I uh, did a bunch of errands. I went downtown. I did all sorts of stuff. I did not notice a big difference in handling, uh, but I did notice a difference in acceleration. Uh, I know a lot of people are like, ah, it's just a placebo effect, it's, you know, it's just new to you. No, like, there is a difference when you take this stuff out. Um, not a huge one, you know, you're not going to be beating, uh, you're not going to be beating, uh, you know, M3s and STIs and, you know, uh, Nissan Zs and stuff like that, but uh, there is definitely a difference in that. I think it makes the car a little bit less anemic feeling. Uh, the back end is going to be a little bit more responsive, a little bit more squirrely. Uh, I have not lost any traction. Um, I can still hit the brakes, pull the handbrake, and the back tires still don't lock up. So that's a pretty good indicator that if they don't lock like immediately and you don't start sliding everywhere, um, there's still plenty of weight over the back of your car. Door panels. As far as door panels, um, that's up to each individual person. I'm going to leave mine because, again, I'm trying to make this easy. Um, if I, I, I could remove them and I have no problems with removing them, the problem is then your door handles start acting funky and you have to find a way to mount stuff and make fabricate brackets for door handles. And there's a lot more that this serves in just making it look pretty. For example, if I took this off, then there would be nothing for this to hook to, and then I'd have to actually make one so that you could open the back doors. And seeing as I almost never use these back doors, that wouldn't be as big of an issue. But, but again, I'm trying to keep this as simple for you guys and myself. Because if I do go to sell this car in six months to a year, I would like to be able to do that pretty easily. Um, what else? Plastic bits, headliner, carpet, all that stuff that you would have to cut or rip out of the car is going to stay. Again, resale, resale, resale. Um, uh, my mentality is I am building a car for me, not who's going to buy it next. Uh, but at the same time, you do kind of want to keep a bit of sellability there as well. Uh, I mean, I'm doing hood pins. I'm doing light bars on the hood. So I'm going to be drilling plenty of holes in body work. Um, and that's already going to be a pain to take care of if somebody doesn't like it. Um, and that is kind of where that mentality of I'm building a car for myself, not the person who buys it next. Um, so I'm going to be enjoying it as best I can uh, and doing what I want to it without actually physically like destroying the interior of the car and stuff like that. Um, that's why a roll cage is kind of iffy. That'll pretty much be an irreversible thing. Um, so there's that. So to be preemptive about this, because I'm sure I'm going to get this question in the comments, um, why didn't you take out these heavy metal rails that hold the seats in? Um, and the problem with that is I don't know if it's a structural piece of the car. I know there's a ball here that almost looks like it's on top of some kind of structural component or suspension component or something like that. Uh, I don't want to take it out and have problems. Um, these here anchor here and here. Then underneath there's some type of frame thing that comes out. So just in case these are any kind of structural support, or any kind of suspension piece that holds everything together rigid, um, I just I really don't want to take that out and then experience problems down the road. Um, the only reason I took these plastic covers out is because they're just plastic covers. Uh, it's not gonna it's not gonna damage anything. You're not gonna get a whole lot of issues there. Um, basically, it looks like this on both sides now, and there's no seats. Um, I'm gonna keep the spare tire cover because I need somewhere to put my cargo if I haul anything. Um, I'm going to keep this seat because I do drive with my sister a lot and I do have friends that I do drive with occasionally but only one at a time. I don't have very many so I'm not like, hey, let's all go on a road trip. Uh, and even if I did, just snap them back in there, you're good to go. Um, so it's the same reason I'm leaving the seat belts and stuff like that. Uh, I don't feel like taking any of that out because again, if I wanted to put this back real quick, it's going to be a lot harder if I remove these rails and remove the seat belts and everything like that. So uh, that's the basics of Honda Element weight reduction, at least in the back end. Um, I'm sure someone's going to find something else I could have taken out. Um, some, some little things that, that just are not necessary, uh, like plastic covers or, or interior bits that don't really do anything. 
Um, but for now, this is, I think, where I'm gonna leave it in the back. Um, again, I, I just drove it a while. No excess interior noise uh, because these are the tops of, I believe, the, the rear strut dampers. Um, you do hear a little bit more suspension noise when you go over a bump. You hear a little bit more of that going over bumps occasionally. But it has to be a big bump. Uh, driving down the street, maybe, you know, you go off a little tiny um, edge of concrete where the road doesn't meet up exactly perfect. You really don't hear anything more. Uh, road noise. Uh, not bad. Not bad. There's not a whole lot extra that comes through here. I barely notice a difference. Um, but I know one of the big things that you guys uh, are maybe be into um, is the seats. Does it make the back end of the car feel weird? Um, there is a difference in the handling. Uh, it's nothing to be worried about. I've went out in the parking lot, did some tests, did some stuff like that. You know, slam on the brakes and turn the steering wheel. I have not experienced any rear end slop or anything like that. Um, it, the rear end feels more lively, definitely. Uh, but it doesn't feel lively enough to the point where you gotta be scared of losing it. Uh, as long as you're driving, you know, uh, decently, on the street you're not going to have problems and if you're on the track as long as you're careful not to be hard on the brake and turning the wheel at the same time you shouldn't have a problem. Um, speakers. So I mentioned the speakers didn't work. That's only half true. Only one of them didn't work. The other one worked. Um, this is going to be what the door is going to look like without any of that stuff. Um, again you still have your plug so if you really wanted to plug it all back in and put it in I mean you're more than welcome to do so. It would not take that long. Um, the sound system Basically, I only removed one working speaker, one of the others wasn't working. Um, it still sounds good. Again, I'm, I'm an audio engineer, I, I really pay attention to that thing. It sounds good. Uh, I've not had a problem with the, um, the sound or like the, the balance of everything. Everything does sound more localized to the driver, um, so you don't hear a whole lot coming back from back here. Because those are the only two speakers you have back here, I'm pretty sure. Um, I thought at one point I heard some sound coming from back here, but I don't see any more speakers. So there's that. Um, so not really a big issue if they're broken to begin with. Uh, it's definitely going to be a big change for somebody who had these working and then removed them. Um, so again, I only removed them because they weren't working for me and it was just dead weight. So just kind of a basic overview of what I've done back here, what it looks like. Uh, some people are going to say it's ugly. Um, Again, if you don't really want to do weight reduction, that's fine. Um, it's not for everybody. I'm only doing it because I plan on actually competing with this car and because uh, I'm, I'm after that performance and that, that kind of thing. Oh, what is that? Is that a brake line? That's a clear brake line? What is this fluid? <gasps> windshield wiper fluid, I'm thinking. Yeah, that's your windshield wiper line. Sorry, I just saw something really fascinating. It's not on the other side, is it? Nope. Maybe that's why my thing doesn't work. My sprayer doesn't work, and it looks like it's clogged in pink fluid. I don't use pink fluid, I use blue fluid. So I'm thinking it might have gotten a clog in there. That's very interesting. Anyway, um, that's just a basic overview of what's done back here. Um, stay tuned for more videos where we put on the light bars and the hood pins, because uh, that'll be coming up. But uh, for now, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next video. Oh, also, I know they didn't put the mud flaps back on. Uh, I know that on the back of the car. I'm taking it to get that done soon. Uh, as well, it's an Element SC badge on the back. Uh, they had to take it off to repaint something and they never put it back. So I'll be taking that back to the shop soon. The car will be completely restored to its former glory. Sorry, never heard that.